9 Areas to Focus for a CFO to Succeed We will list the new areas and have a brief discuss on each of them, later we will look into each for further details and discussion. 1. Scouting your surroundings and defining your mission. It is important to grasp the general characteristics of small and mid-size businesses, which determine their organizational environment. As a head of finance, you must fully understand the nature of your position, your place within the organization, and the expectations of your bosses. The crucial tasks of identifying the key functional sectors of your responsibilities and studying essential specifics of your employer's business are prerequisites of your professional success. 2. Enforce the laws, policies, procedures, and controls. A company is a microcosm of a country, a nation with its own government, sometimes monarchic, other times democratic, population, sovereign territory, and foreign relations. Like any country, it must have the law of the land, a system of rules and guidelines, which shapes its internal and external activities. Well-defined policies and procedures, properly followed, ensure the company's efficiency and effectiveness as an entity. They minimize risks and perpetuate advancement. Managing the application of the law requires persistent monitoring. Altogether, these components constitute the internal control structure with the controlling duties in the hands of financial executives. 3. Understand and manage the company's capital resources. From startup to full maturity, and at every stage in between, a company needs capital to finance its activity cycle from its operational inception until the realized revenues are turned into collected funds. Furthermore, availability of money and excess of immediate needs is a primary resource for sustainable growth. The basic qualifications of a successful head of finance include comprehensive knowledge of various financing means available to different types of companies and the ability to frame an efficient capital structure applicable to a particular organization. 4. Manage cash inflows and outflows. You can be the richest person in the world, with billions in equities and unlimited credit lines. Yet, if for whatever troubled reasons you need $20,000 in cash on Saturday night, you'd better have it under your mattress, the safe behind that Picasso will do, too. The same goes for any business. As a head of finance, you may have at your company's disposal buildings, factories, millions in inventories and receivables, and sizable credit lines. The business may be recording impressive profits that make your financial statements look very attractive. But none of it means that you will be able to meet your payroll requirements tomorrow, unless you carefully plan for it. That is why cash flow management is probably the most vital function of CFOs and controllers, especially in small and mid-size companies. 5. Structure the information management, analysis and reporting. Entrepreneurs and CFOs open the business sections of their daily newspapers every morning with a good chance of encountering the cliché that information is power, and it may make total sense to them in the context of the material they are reading. Yet, many of them fold the paper, come to the office, and try to run their companies with inadequate or non-existent analysis of their enterprise's health. This is the functional area where a CFO or controller can impact the commercial survival of the business in the most profound way. Quality and expediency of analytical and reporting activities are at the heart of executive decision-making, and have the power of promoting a success or instigating a failure. In the fast-paced environment of the present economy, providing essential information at the right moment is like supplying oxygen to a human brain, in its absence, you cease to exist. 6. Accounting by the book. 
This is not a part in which I try to jam the entirety of accounting theory and its practical application into a few chapters. It would be an impossible and, most importantly, unnecessary task. Even the owner of the smallest business needs the support of a knowledgeable accountant, and the readers who have reached the top levels of accounting and finance management wouldn't have been able to do so without knowing their way around their company's books. It therefore makes more sense to concentrate on several important elements that strongly affect the quality of conventional accounting's final products, the financial statements. Yet these items are, according to my observations, frequently overlooked, ignored, or forgotten. Standardized accounting principles used in preparation of the financial statements make these documents universally acceptable as a company's credentials to lenders, investors, commercial partners, licensing agencies, and governments. So, it is important that the books are compliant and the statements reflect the company's position accurately. Even if the books aren't being audited by an independent accounting firm, they should still be timely and correct, business conditions constantly change, and the need to present financial statements to an external party may emerge unexpectedly. 7. Manage Risks There was a time when the only risk prevention policy employed by accounting and finance professionals was to try to veto any innovative or enterprising initiative. That time has long passed, as a member of a commercial strategic team and the CEO's partner, a contemporary CFO must support opportune plans of business development that don't guarantee absolute success. Still, the uniqueness of a CFO's position is in its duality. While participation in risk-taking decisions, we remain concerned with the assessment of possible outcomes and try to minimize the uncertainties. Thus, most C.F.O.'s agendas contain a complex of responsibilities focused on managing various risks, preventing possible pitfalls, and ensuring that the company is impervious to any dangers. Only by being prepared for future possibilities in advance can we justify our approval of any degree of unpredictability. As Niccolò Machiavelli taught in his treatise on governing all forms of organization, The Prince, The Prince and the Art of War, CRW Publishing, 2004, for it is by foreseeing difficulties from afar that they are easily provided against, but awaiting their near approach, remedies are no longer in time, for the malady has become incurable. 8. Ensure the going concern. It's scary out there. The daily struggle for business survival is getting harder and harder. There are no saved paths, definite possibilities, or guaranteed outcomes. Economic, financial, and commercial environments are constantly changing. The first impulse is to play ostrich, bury your head in the sand of the daily routine and try not to worry about your bottom sticking out into the doubtful future. However, the harshness of the daily reality is the very reason why contemporary CFOs and other senior financial managers cannot afford to act like that. You have to raise yourself above the scope of direct functional responsibilities and define your position from a holistic point of view as an integral part of the business mechanism. You have to be brave and look forward. Partnering with the CEO slash business owner in the process of shaping the company's future became a mandatory job requirement a decade ago. Today we must go further and not just participate and support, but also apply our commercial acumen to formulate and propose new initiatives. It is a misconception that these tasks belong only to the world of big business. Small and mid-sized companies are more vulnerable to external impacts and, therefore, in need of even more strategic executive care. 9. The Management of People Many functions discussed so far are essential parts of business administration and organizational management, 
development of policies and procedures, enforcement of performance criteria, planning, controlling, and so on. Managing human resources, both as a set of routine tasks and as a process of dealing with actual people, is probably the most idiosyncratic of job requirements for financial executives. We try very hard to stay within the comfort zone of accounting principles and financial concepts, abstracting the labor units and titles on organizational charts from the individuals they represent. Yet the impact of the human factor on the company's activities is too significant to ignore. So, in order to succeed in this functional realm we have no choice but to summon the most diverse complex of abilities, practical expertise, specialized knowledge, psychological acumen, behavioral awareness, and people skills.